Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I've created a very simple little application here. Let me show you how I've done that. I went to the File menu, went to New and selected Project, um, left the C Sharp part, sorry about that, hit the VB Web Stuff, and uh, here's the template for the uh, ASP.NET MVC web application. So I selected that, and um, the, uh, the structure that was created in the background is what we got. So um, let's take a look at my Solution Explorer very briefly. Notice I have my controller folder, I have a models folder, and I have a views folder. Those are where we're going to be doing our work. I've already added a model. A model is primarily your database and data rules. Uh, in this example, I used a link to SQL to uh, connect up to the Northwind database. So that's the NWDBML. Uh, uh, in the background, you can see the three entities that were created. I chose category and product and supplier. And uh, these are the properties. This is just basically a table to entity mapping. I also created a small partial class. Um, I did that by, uh, again, let's go, let me lock this down. I went here and um, went to my uh, data model. And I, uh, I viewed the code. And when I viewed the code, it gave me basically a stub, a partial class. And then I filled it in with the details that you see here. Um, I have a, a number of simple little methods here that allow me to uh, uh, more easily get the information without um, complicating my controller. So I have some get methods. I can get the products, which returns a list of product. Um, this is part of the definition of the link to SQL. It's the products property which is basically a, a link to SQL table. And so I re, uh, turn that into a list and return that as a list of product. Uh, I do a same thing down here with categories. I get the categories and return it as a list. And similarly, I do it with suppliers. Uh, I have a method here that allows me to add a product. I pass a product into this procedure. And it uses the insert on submit method, which is part of the link to SQL um, infrastructure, to store that uh, product into the uh, database. And then I have a couple of specific um, getters. This one gets the product by its ID. And I pass in an ID. This statement here is just my, um, my um, uh, link query, where I, I return a single uh, entity. And I define a, a lambda expression here, a function p, where p dot product id, that is the actual um, entity itself, is equal to the product id that's passed in. Um, and I have a similar thing down here, yeah, um, get supplier uh, by id, where I, again, um, get a single result from the supplier table, um, where the, um, the value s S dot supplier ID is equal to the supplier ID passed in. So these are just a couple of helper methods that I have um, created. Um, a couple, <laughs> two, four, six helper methods that I've created and added them to my model because they really manage the database and that's where that code should live. Okay, so let me come here and go back to my solution explorer. Now I want to uh, create um, a new controller. And in uh, the release candidate, we can take we can create controllers very simply. Notice we already have some uh, created there, the account controller and the home controller. We talked about the home controller on the previous video. Create a new controller here by simply right-clicking, bringing up a context menu. And I know you can't see that whole thing there, but I hope this pops up. Yeah, so that pops up in the right side, uh, right uh, area. You can see it. And I want to add a controller, so I specify that. And the name of the controller is called product. Um, it's my product controller. And here I have a choice of adding some action methods for creating, updating, and deleting. Again, this was not available in Preview 4 or earlier. It may have been available in Preview 5. Um, I didn't look at Preview 5. But um, I'm going to go ahead and click on this. And what it's going to do is it's going to create, create a product controller for me and then stub in these uh, extra helper methods. So I'll click on Add. And here we see uh, the class itself, the product controller. And here we see uh, a, uh, an index method, which, which is called by simply saying get product. Um, 
Here's a method that provides details. So um, this URL is get uh, product uh, details and you indicate a value. That's the ID right here. Uh, the ones I'm going to fill in um, are the index, the details, and I'm going to fill in uh, the edit down here to begin with. So before I start that, I want to add a, um, uh, a class-wide variable here. I'm going to dimension something called NW as a new wait for it to catch up with me, uh, a new uh, NW data context. Again, that gets me access to the data model created in my link to SQL. So that will be available to all my procedures. And in my index, which is basically just listing all my products, um, I want to first get a list of the products. So I'm going to dimension something called the prod list a local little collection here and that is going to be set equal to my my NW dot and here I want to use one of the methods that you saw earlier and the method I want to use is get products so here's get products so that gets me all the products and then I want to uh, return the view here and what I want to pass to the view is this product list so I will type in and notice I don't get any help here. This is a bug. I found this bug um, and the uh, I'm always proud about these things and um, I showed this to uh, uh, the gentleman in charge of the uh, the ID, IDE for Visual Studio. He confirmed it's a bug and he said it exists in Visual Studio 10 which is the new un yet unreleased product and he said he got it fixed so I'm comfortable. Makes me happy when I can cause something like that to happen. Notice I backspaced and now this silly um, IntelliSense works. So I want to go ahead and uh, return the product list. Now I'll, I'll, I'll define the view actually in the next, uh, uh, next video. Here in the details it's a similar situation. Um, instead of getting uh, a whole list of products I want to get a single product. So I'm going to go ahead and dimension something called product and I'm going to set that equal to NW dot and my getter methods and I want to get a product by ID and the ID is specified by this uh, argument that's passed in so I just say ID there and then in my return view and I, I, f I figured out a way to sort of fake this little lack of uh, proper behavior if I just backspace here um, then I want to return prod so there's the prod put the paren back in and so that will just give me details on that specific product. Finally, what I would like to do is I would like to come down and I would like to go ahead and do an edit. Again, I'm going to edit a specific product. So like we saw before, I have to get that product. So I'm going to dimension prod um, and set that equal to, again, get my product by ID. Uh, get, oh, yep, NW dot get product by ID and pass it the ID that was given to me by the uh, call to this edit procedure. And again, I'm going to return a view and return the product. So PROD, and we take care of that. Now, um, I haven't defined any views yet, so um, we're not going to be able to see anything interesting. Um, I like to keep my video segment short. I'm at about 8 minutes and 49 seconds right now. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this video. In the next video, we'll go ahead and define the views.